Hello there, my name is Eleanor Robson and I'm head of the history department here at UCL and I'm here in my office on a lovely spring day feeling very sad that I'm not able to welcome you in person onto campus. At this time of the year it's one of the favourite parts of my job to see lots of prospective students and their families, to show them around, to introduce them to our amazing community here at uh, UCL History. As, I can't, as we can't do that this year, instead I thought I'd say hello in person and explain a little bit about what I think we can offer students who come here to London to study with us. I won't go through the details of the syllabus, my colleague Ian Stewart will be talking to you in a separate video about that and you'll also hear him see me if you like talking to students about their experiences here. But what I wanted to give you instead was a sense of what we understand by history in the department and how we think history contributes, makes a positive contribution to the world. So one of the most important aspects of history at UCL is that we see all of the work we do as being integrated as a whole, that is our research and our teaching are very closely combined. So that is if you come and study with us you'll be working with uh, some of the world's leading researchers who will be teaching directly from their, uh, from their experience and from their research. Some of that will be already published but some of that they will be working with you to help them think through their new ideas and you may well be the first person to hear of, um, of new ideas, of new materials. And that means too, it won't just be one way, that we will also work to teach all of our students how to become producers of history themselves. So when studying history so far, you've mostly learned, I think, about how to what we like to think of as consuming history, how to understand it and make sense of the narratives other people have told about the past. What we would like you to be able to do by the time you finish with us is not only to understand how that process happens, but for you to be confident in the production of history for yourself. Now, why does this matter? Well, for many of, the, many of us here, the work we do is inherently embedded in the present day. So, for instance, I'm a historian of ancient Iraq. Perhaps you can see in the books behind me and the artefacts on my bookshelf, I study some of the world's oldest cultures from 5,000 years ago. And you might think, and I used to think, that that was really something that was of purely of intellectual value and I did it because it was fun and it didn't feel like it had much to do with the, with the present day. Now that is still the case and I think that's still a really valid reason to, to study history. You know, in these times of all times we all need to get away from it all, to get away from the present moment and the past is a good way to escape from that. But it's also a really good way to help us con confront the present and the future and help, them help to make the world a better place. So the big research work that I do at the moment is uh, working in Iraq with Iraqi colleagues to help them think about how history and the past in general can contribute to a better society um, in these post-conflict times for Iraq. Um, so social cohesion, economic value, how history can help rebuild communities. So I'm supporting colleagues in Mosul for instance who are um, doing um, interviews with um, people who who come from Mosul, who are currently living in IDP camps, about their memories of the city, who are doing archival work, who are doing archaeological work, trying to reconstruct the material and social fabric of the city that was so thoroughly destroyed by ISIS between 2015 and 17. And what's really exciting and important about that work is that we are supporting and enabling local researchers to do the work that is most valuable for them in a local context rather than here in London say I know what's important for Iraq and let's let's go on and do that but a lot of listening and responding and a completely different um, project happening here in the department some of our medievalists who look um, at medieval hospitals are not only thinking about gosh increasingly presciently the, uh, the role of hospitals and uh, social care, 
but also how uh, town councils can um, develop heritage trails to help people understand the, the buildings that survive. This is a project in Essex, but also how heritage itself can be a very um, healthful and healing uh, tool in, in kind of social, um, in social health. Another example, again completely different, one of our younger historians is a historian of the drug trade in Mexico and he is part of a project that has been advising the US government on how to um, to help Mexicans uh, replace drugs crops with uh, more locally viable uh, fruit and, and vegetable and grain crops so that they're no longer economically dependent on, um, on cocaine and uh, cannabis. So all of that will feed into your, um, if you come here, you, you will be able to choose options that will, that will help you think about the connection between ancient and modern Iraq, that will help you think about drug, the history of the drug trade, that will help you think about the history of health, or the history of empire, and, and how that's panning out in Britain today, for instance. All of these things, and more. But as well as all that intellectual challenge and this idea of social good, we also take our students very seriously as whole people. We know that coming to London is incredibly exciting, but it can also be incredibly scary. Equally, if you're already living in London and you're thinking about how you're going to manage between commuting between home and here, we get that. A lot of our students do that too. And so our, our approach to all of our students is one that tries to nurture the whole of you. So every student that comes here has a personal tutor who is with them right from the beginning to the end. So I have my personal tutees now are in their third year. I've been their tutor since the, they arrived here in 2017. I've supported them through the joys and the crises, the money worries, the, you know, the boyfriend trouble, the essay emergencies, the unfortunate things that happen at home when coursework has to stop and you go and deal with that and this year I've been writing references to them for the jobs I've been helping them get into graduate programs I've been celebrating their great marks with them and you know sharing pictures of our pets and all sorts of silly stuff like that so that's really important to us that our students get to know us and we're on first name terms with our students and they with us we're mostly working with them one-to-one -one or in small groups, a very small number of large-scale large, large -scale lectures in the department. But as well as what we offer in one-to-one, -one, there are all sorts of support structures around, both within the department and a UCL as a whole. So if you have health worries, mental health worries, financial worries, thinking about careers, the list is endless. There are an amazing set of resources here that we know how to access and will enable you to get, to get the support you need. So I think this is one of the, the happiest places to work and I've worked in many universities around the country and I also think it's one of the most intellectually stimulating and enjoyable and incredibly um, gregarious happy places. And I'm really sorry that I can't show you that in person but I do hope that um, you will take some time to explore our website to have a phone call with us if you want, to kind of talk to one of our students, me or one of one of my colleagues, answer questions that you may have about how things work in practice, what it's really like here. So don't take my word for it, talk to a colleague or a student and find out um, from them how it really is. And then I hope come September I'll be seeing you in person and welcoming you here onto campus. Um, and helping you to start the beginning of your academic career and what I hope will be an amazing three or four years of your life. Meanwhile, if you've got exams coming up, please don't fret about those, just exams. And also know that once you've done A-levels or IB or whatever it is, you're never going to have to sit that intensity of exams ever again. And you've got the whole summer ahead of you then to relax and to read, so we'll give you ideas of things to read before you arrive so you can feel prepared, but that's not compulsory. And so by the time you arrive here, you'll be re really ready, to, raring to go and looking forward to um, 
learning with us and helping us learn more and just having a whole lot of fun um, here um, on campus at UCL. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye bye.